Hey there, y'all. I'm Paula Dean, and today I want to show you some good old-fashioned meals that can be pre-made, frozen, and served whenever your on-the-go family is ready for them. But before we get going, we're going to pick up some key ingredients to my number one freezer favorites. And then we'll come back to the kitchen where we're going to kick up that oven and make the most lip-smacking lasagna you ever did taste. And then next, it'll be a tasty toss-up between my scrumptious Savannah seafood gumbo with rice and this sinful sausage pie. But hey, they'll all be there just waiting for you. So y'all take a tip from me and befriend your freezer. Because after all, a lady's got a life to live. Today's show is all about late night snacking, and one of Michael's favorite late night snacks is lasagna. And I make a killer lasagna, southern style. But I want to try a little something different. I want to get some fresh mozzarella from some of my Italian friends and bring it back home and do it my way. So y'all come ride with me. We're going to get the scoop on the cheese. Hi, I'm Irene. It's nice to meet Same you, Irene. Here. This is my sister Carmela. Hi, Carmela. How Hi, are you? I've heard so many good things about your shop here. I've heard that y'all make the best mozzarella. Did I mozzarella, say it right? Mozzarella, yes. Mozzarella you said it right. in the whole entire world. I'm making a big lasagna, this big, uh -huh. Irene. So, so how much cheese maybe, do you think I'll need? Maybe two mozzarella. Okay, yeah, because I like it really, really this cheesy. Will, this is a very rich cheese. You'll okay. enjoy it. That sounds great, because I'm going to have some other cheeses in with it. I love your store. This should be enough. Ooh. We're here like 70, about 75 you, years. You've in been in the same, same location. Store. So, right. it's definitely a family yes. tradition, right? We're here, yeah. We and y'all make all this right here. Right here, yes. all made here. Mama, you got a great group of girls here. Thanks so much for having me today. And I'll see y'all later. Okay, okay. Bye. 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 Y'all keep cooking. Okay, bye. Bye, bye. bye. bye Paula. What'd y'all think about those mozzarella sisters? Weren't they hoots? I tell you what. I can tell that they were Italian women. They tried to feed me to death while I was there. They stuffed me full of cheeses. Speaking of cheeses, I've got that fabulous fresh mozzarella cheese. And we're fixing to get started on a pot of lasagna that's going to knock your socks off. Before I left, I asked Michael if he could kind of get me ready because I wanted to quickly run in and be able to get started on this lasagna. And he's done a great job. He's already browned off my ground beef for me, which is such a nice head start. And I like to saute my vegetables in half butter and half olive oil. Now I'm going to dump in onion, bell pepper, and that great fresh garlic that adds so much flavor to your pot. I'm going to add some canned tomatoes now. If it's tomato season and you have some fresh, by all means use them. And next I'm going to add tomato sauce. Italian seasoning. Some fresh parsley. A good seasoning salt. A little pinch of sugar. House seasoning. Your mixture of salt, garlic powder, and pepper. And a couple of bay leaves. I'm just going to stir those up together. And then we're going to add some water. I'm going to transfer the ground beef into the sauce. Just like this. And this is lean ground beef. So I'm not even going to bother draining it. 
All right, so I'm gonna put that lid back on there and let that simmer while I step on over here and grate up this mozzarella that I got from the sisters this morning. Isn't that pretty, pretty cheese? You know, I don't think that you can get too much cheese in Italian dishes, can you? And this is so good and soft and fresh, it's just kind of rolling on the grater, but that's all right, because by the time it's mixed in, what's well, a little hunk here and there in the lasagna, it can't hurt it. I know that most of us probably use the box lasagna noodles. Well, I was able to get my hands on some fresh lasagna noodles that are gonna be so good in this. And we're not gonna have to cook them like you would the box. Now, I'm using cottage cheese today. Uh, I didn't have any ricotta on hand, so this will work nicely. And I'm just gonna break a couple of eggs up into it. I have made lasagna and spaghetti a thousand times, and there's not one hint of Italian heritage in my blood but we make it so good. Everybody just loves it. So I'm gonna start assembling the dish that we're gonna bake our lasagna in. So I'm gonna start with a very thin layer of sauce, and I'm gonna put just enough that that lasagna has something to sit on. So I'm gonna come in here, and I'm just gonna break that off to fit the pan. Now we're gonna start with all of our cheeses. And one more time, you can do any cheeses that you like, whatever is your favorite, not mine. I've got cheddar, Gruyere, and Swiss. I love Swiss cheese and lasagna. And I'm gonna go in there with the mozzarella from the Mozzarella Sisters. Put a little layer of grated Parmesan. And then I'm gonna add some dollops of the cottage cheese and egg that's been mixed together. And now cream cheese, and I just tear it off in little bite-sized pieces and just drop it randomly in there. Now we're gonna ladle on some more sauce. All right. This time I'm gonna put just a little bit more sauce because that, that fresh pasta is really gonna soak up the liquid. We're gonna go back in here now with a, another layer of pasta. All right, now we're gonna start by doing the same thing all over again. So, I think this time you know the steps. Oh, I've served this so many times at home. When we were young, married, poor kids, we would make spaghetti sauce because it was a lot cheaper than lasagna because of the cheeses. It can get a little pricey, but when we had a little extra money to blow, we'd change that spaghetti pot to a lasagna pot. And oh my goodness, we just thought you couldn't eat any better than this. All right, now this is ready to go into the oven. And I've got one right next door to it in the oven that's ready to be cheesed. Now you can finish yours off with any cheese that you want to. This is the three cheeses that I'm using. We're gonna give that about 15 minutes and then it's ready to eat. Oh my gracious, look at that. All right, I'm gonna have to just taste this. It's so good. Y'all stay with me because I'm gonna show you how I make seafood gumbo, Father Hank style. So I'll see you in a minute. All right, I'm just finishing up our roux. 
and I'm sure that most of y'all know how to make roux. It's just about half oil and half flour. And you wanna bring it to the color of a new penny. All right, I'm gonna switch to the wooden spoon. I'm through with my roux. So I'm gonna add onions, celery, and bell pepper. We're just gonna cook those off just for a little while. I wanna tell y'all about my seafood gumbo. My future brother-in-law, Hank Groover, in fact, his name is Father Hank. He's a Catholic priest in New Orleans. Well, Hank has become so involved in the community over there and learned so much about Louisiana cooking. Every time he comes home to Savannah, first thing I say is, Hank, let's get in the kitchen. I, I want you to teach me another dish. And so I conformed my way of doing seafood gumbo to Father Hank's influence on it. Now I'm going to add chicken stock slowly to that. Now I'm going to add a little water. All right, now I'm going to start with the seasonings. I've got fresh parsley, I've got lemon pepper, house seasoning, basil, thyme, a little cayenne pepper, garlic, a couple of bay leaves, so now I'm fixing to change the color of this just a little bit by adding a few tomatoes, not a lot, and last a little Worcestershire sauce. Now you can use different kinds of sausage. Today I'm gonna use Shirazo, which is a Spanish influence. And you can't hardly beat the kielbasa sausage, which comes from a Polish influence. And this is what's gonna flavor our pot. This sausage that I'm putting in right now is actually used in a lot of Mexican cooking. Then it's gonna be a little on the spicy side. And good old kielbasa is delicious with seafood. Okay, so we've gotten everything in here except for the okra. Now today I'm using fresh okra, but frozen works so nicely. Now we're ready to put the lid on this and it's gonna be a wonderful pot of gumbo. I'm gonna move this pot back here and let it simmer. And I've got a pot that has been simmering low for about an hour and a half. And I'm gonna pull out our seafood and we're gonna start adding that to the pot. You definitely don't wanna add your seafood too early. Now, I have chosen to use scallops, oysters, shrimp, and crab. Now, the first ingredient is gonna be the crab. The next thing is our scallops. Now, my oysters. Now I'm gonna stir that around and let it cook for a few minutes because the shrimp truly take only two to three minutes. Okay, I think it's about time for the shrimp now. And you can see that I've left the tails to the shrimp on strictly because that's the way I like it. You can see them already changing colors on us just that quickly. At this time, you would add your filet powder that's ground sassafras leaves, and it gives it a nice flavoring, but it also serves as a thickening agent for your gumbo. So unless I know the whole pot's gonna be eaten now, I would not add it. All right, while those shrimp are cooking, I'm gonna start fixing me a little plate. I love rice with gumbos. I like gumbo with rice and French bread. I don't want any salad, any slaw, no nothing. And then I would add just a little filet to that. Oh. Looks so delicious. Can't wait to dig in. 
My stomach's just growling. It's just heavenly, Father Hank. You devil, you. Coming up next, one of my favorites, my friend Ron's Tybee Island sausage pie. waiting for y'all to come back, I went ahead and scrambled up the sausage for our next dish. Now this is just a bulk breakfast sausage. And he's browned up and ready to go. I'm gonna take a slotted spoon and just clean that sausage out of that pot because we got a little more things to do in this pot. And now we're gonna put just a pat of butter in our pan and we're gonna saute just some yellow chopped onions until they're tender. All right, we're gonna add some milk and cream cheese. I've got a buddy that lives out at Tybee Island, which is Savannah Beach, but Ron makes this for his guest. It's a great brunch dish, but it's also a nice late night snack. All right, now I'm gonna transfer this to a glass bowl, and we're going to cool that off. We're going to chill it just like that in that ice bath. And in this bowl, we're going to break the eggs. This is a very quiche-like dish. So we're going to break these eggs just like this and give them a few beats. Now I'm going to add a little fresh ground pepper a little salt, cheese, and Worcestershire. All right, I'm using today a refrigerated store-bought pie crust. And you can really decorate these up pretty. We're gonna just take our sausage, and then I'm gonna take our cooled cream cheese milk and add it to the eggs. Beat that together and pour it over our sausage. So this is ready to go, just that simple. To protect the edge of my crust, I've made me a little rim of tin foil to just keep it from getting a burnt look to it. So he's ready to go in the oven now for about 30 minutes. Now I've got another one in this oven that should be ready. So I'm gonna remove this very gently because <laughs> I like to keep my pie crust whole. Looks beautiful. Now I'm just gonna sprinkle this with a little fresh parsley and that's it. So let's hope it'll come out whole. Mm. Thank you so much, Ron. Beautiful and ready to eat. Just that easy. Let's see if mine is as good as yours, Ron. I'd say you taught me well, Ron. Y'all stick around because I'm going to share some tips with y'all that's going to make your late night snacking real tasty. I want to give y'all a few tips that I think will be helpful when you're making any of these dishes. First of all, I want to talk to you for a minute about seafood safety. It's very, very important that you keep your seafood very, very well chilled. Even in the refrigerator, it's a very good idea to line your bowl with ice. And that will give it an extra chill and keep it fresher and safer for you longer. When you're getting ready to bake off your pie, you know how sometimes, especially if you make a pie crust from scratch, it'll bubble on you. Well, a good way to keep that from happening is to take your thawed out pie crust, prick it with your fork, line it with parchment paper, 
and then weight it down with peas, and that'll keep your pie crust from puffing on you. And the last thing is freezing foods for later use. The lasagna is great frozen in small portions, and it will last safely up to at least a month and you can enjoy that great Italian flavor one more time without all the work. The seafood gumbo or the lasagna or Ron's Tybee Island sausage pie will make a great quick late night meal for those unexpected guests. So whether it's yourself or your friends that you're feeding, I wish you best dishes from my kitchen to yours.